already. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mama Daughter Dialogue uh, with your hostess. One of your hostesses, Kyra, and my co host. I'm her mother, Kat. I'm not doing Mama Cat anymore. <laughs> she is my mama. We know I'm your mother, so go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, before we get into the topic, if you like what we're talking about, um, if it sounds interesting, please like the video. This will encourage us to keep continuing these conversations. Um, our purpose is to encourage conversations um, between... Um, parents and their children grown children it doesn't necessarily have to be grown like me but you know with your children about just various topics and being open and honest yeah I just want to say I'm this this started off with us having these long conversations and then going me going oh that was a pretty good conversation right I don't know how you obviously you must have felt the same way but um, we also, you know, think about how <clears throat> I have people in my life who don't, don't get a chance to talk with their children. I think the way we do. Right. And, um, it just seems like it would be a good idea to kind of share, you know, the type of things we talk about. And some yeah, of them yeah. are kind of like <laughs> really random. A lot are really random actually. <laughs> We had some random conversations, but yeah, so before we actually get started into the topic that we want to talk about today, um, I have an obsession, like we, you know, go into the obsessions. My obsession lately is, I won't even say Nestle working out, but I've been following this fitness trainer. Her name is Christina. I don't know her last name very well, but she's like, she lives in the UK and she's half Nigerian. Um, yeah, she's half Nigerian. So she uh, she has these Instagram lives that she says of these workouts, but then she has this like virtual um, fitness uh, club or whatever, and that you can pay monthly into, which I haven't yet, but that's only, that's personal things, more finance because but I would if I could, because her IG lives by themselves, those workouts, I am sweating my ears off. Like I'm usually, I'm like sweating. Like I've, I've never sweated. I don't remember sweating this hard. Like, and my body is usually hurting. So, but it's good. And I've been doing that for the last couple of weeks. So. Yeah, yeah, and that's the important thing that you feel good after the workout. I, I could see if it were the other way around, you might give it up. But if you feel good, then that means that it's something you're going to make a habit. Me, personally, I, um, I've been watching all of these African dance videos, which I love, love, love. And, and I want to do some of them, but they're moving so fast. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I think what I'm, it's going to be great exercise, but I think that's going to be my uh, my hobby. I haven't even started right now. I'm just studying them, but it, I want it to be my hobby to learn some of these dances. And I guess the thing is, they're really most of the videos have people like your age, Kyra. <laughs> And I'm thinking, am I too old? To no, too old? there are dan there are dance tutorials that you can find. So there's the dances, but then a lot of people have to look at the tutor tutorial. So if you know the the name of the dance and you look up dance tutorial on YouTube, you'll be able to find somebody who's, who's breaking it down. Because sometimes I just tried to learn a, a dance routine recently, and I was just like, it took me a couple of hours, and the dance itself is like two minutes or less. So, I saw that video, the last yeah. video, and it was so good, but it was so funny, the comical part of it. You should um, share it. I'd appreciate uh, it. For those who don't know, so I, I have an Instagram that's more about book-related things, but I have started posting videos here and there with like dancing, but also kind of a little bit of comedy. So that's what she's 
talking about my instagram is down below um actually that's not the whole video like anyone who knows about the that body challenge it's not the whole like dance routine so there's that um did you have like an obsession oh well you did <laughs> the dance <laughs> you that is your obsession sorry yeah that's my obsession okay so that's how you know I'm like somewhere else um like your mother I don't know um but that's the one I want to talk about go ahead <laughs> why do I keep go ahead just 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 what so, are we talking about today yeah so today we're talking about therapy um and you know as people in the black community how it's been received and you know, just our thoughts about therapy, like maybe our personal thoughts, but mo mostly were about, um, you know, when, when uh, the conversations that you've noticed or how you feel that the Black community received it. Mm -hmm. Like first, um, what is, are your thoughts about therapy? Do you have any particular thoughts, like positive or negative or anything like that? Well, my general thought... <laughs> mean is there are so many types of therapy for so many different things so I guess it kind of depends I mean you've got marriage counseling which I think is good but it also depends on you got marriage counseling you've got what if people get attacked what is it PTSD or sexual assault you've got you've got so many things therapy for being abused, being a, in an abusive relationship, or maybe Addi you addiction. addiction. I mean, there's just so many things, but I think therapy can be, I, I think it depends on the source. Like, um, I think it depends on the source and, and maybe in the perspective, I prefer I would prefer to go to a, um, maybe be in a Christian group or group of faith um, to go through some therapy. But I, I keep thinking of um, the fact that you would probably see that more likely as, you know, a support group. So. I think, you know, you say that, that's, and that's interesting because about, uh, Christian therapy, like uh, therapists who uh, practice, but with faith in mind. I, you know, when you, when you think about therapy, I think in general, people think that, uh, or, or go to a psychologist, you go because you're crazy or something is like absolutely wrong with you. Um, I don't think people think of like rehab as in that type of therapy too, but like, um, in general but it's like people think that you have to have something wrong with you but um and so like oh that you're crazy only crazy people go to therapy and I think that's actually part of the reason why um there's such a stigma against it on top of that for black people you know you hear people say like oh nothing's wrong with you whatever um like you showing symptoms of being depressed, for example, you don't know it's depression, but you just know like you can't get out of bed or you're overeating or under eating. And like, you just don't have whatever the symptoms of depression are, but people may think like, oh, you just pray to Jesus. You're not praying hard enough. And yeah, praying is helpful and finding guidance, but you know, there are tools on earth that could help. Like a therapist could help kind of, talk you through being an unbiased person outside of your life to help you kind of figure out what is going on with you um so like uh and I and actually when, my point was what I was thinking about was that you were talking about like Christian therapy it's funny because I I wouldn't have thought that I didn't know that was a thing until recently like there are Christian based therapists yeah so yeah yeah and not only that, um, when, I think something you might have brought up had to do with people. Okay, you said something about people not wanting to go to therapy in there. 
<clears throat> one of the reasons I thought of was um, people think it's going to be held against them. But if you have that kind of concern, maybe, you know, maybe you can go to someone who's not, you know, I don't know, like through your job or something like that. Maybe you could go to somebody in your church mm-hmm. or a group in your church or they're not going to be keeping record <laughs> of, um, you know, of the fact that you went to talk to someone. So, yeah, I was thinking about the fact that, let's see, I went to therapy for just issues with just, I just felt like I was just having a really hard time on one job. I think probably therapy should be open to all educators because, or probably any position where you're dealing with the public, because sometimes you just never know what you're going to be dealing with from one day to the next. And you're expected to give your best whereas people who you're working with are not not necessarily expected to be on their best behavior. And it's, it is, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's, it's a form of abuse. (laughs) It feels like a form of abuse sometimes, especially as an educator, because I don't think people expect, I don't think people respect educators in here like they do in other countries. They don't. I don't think they do. I think, but I do agree as far as like jobs are concerned that, um, like any any job that you're serving the public, like I'm in a customer service based job, um, having like a, a counselor or something, having those type of benefits is helpful, and it's very. And I think most companies, maybe bit especially big companies, they have like EAP employer. What's it called? Employer something package, is where, it- they, huh? For for comfort, I, so I, I, like where you where you have like um one of the benefits includes having certain amount of access to go to a therapist or a counselor like a career counselor whatever because it could be a lot and I remember this one girl um in our in our job who's black by the way and she was very pro like therapy and and pro like mental health um. But, you know, I remember her talking about it a bit, um, about going to therapists. How she was very much an advocate of, like, going to therapy. And I wonder if, like, you know, maybe as far as Black people, why, you know, people always think, oh, you got to be crazy or something is wrong with you. But mm-hmm. having, um, like, a therapist be normalized in those type of spaces, maybe in career spaces, they can see, like, when you see other people doing certain things like that, going to a therapist, um, then, you know, maybe these spaces where Black people are thriving, especially getting into these more high demand jobs, you know, more people will be accepting of like therapy. But if everyone that you, uh, every, if everyone around you is saying like, oh, you know, therapy, like looking at it sideways with a side eye, like it's something crazy. Um, it's, you know, and so like being like uh, having counselors in schools that teachers can go to, having counselors in customer service based places, I think is helpful, especially for those who are like in communities of people who don't who don't look at therapy as something favorable um, like that. It, it, it will kind of help normalize it even more, I think. So are there any experiences you can think of where you know anybody who has taken advantage of therapy? Hey, um, I've done physical therapy. That's and not the same thing. It, it is a different therapy. It's a therapy, but we're, well, we're talking about more so, or when I think about it, when people talk about the issues, have anything against therapy, it's more like mental therapy, mental health, right? Yeah. So, uh, physical therapy is helpful. The your stretches people, they can help you with everything else. But uh, 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been to a counselor before. Mm-hmm. Um, I plan on going back, but I didn't have, I, I've been to a couple and my experiences were okay. The first time wasn't so great. The second person I went to more recently was better, but I don't know. I felt kind of foolish. I stopped. Um, and, and, um, and then I know people like, uh, like the, the, the young woman that I mentioned who used to work at my job, she went to another job, but she was, uh, she was a big advocate for therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, it's people here and there. My big deal with, um, I, I think a drawback of going to a stranger for physical therapy is just that this person is a stranger and I, I think it's sometimes better for the person to know you, but the best way to speak to someone who knows you is to speak to someone you trust, a friend or a family <laughs> member. I thought we were talking about mental therapy, like psychology. I am talking about that. Mental, emotion, I mean, mental, emotional therapy, I still think it's on the level of speaking to someone that you trust, with a friend or family member who knows you. And um, I don't know, I, I would say that for me growing up as um, basically a child of a single parent family with a dad who was paralyzed, probably two thirds of my life now. I mean, of course he's gone. But there were just a lot of issues that came that surrounded his situation. And um, for me, it, it, there were just some, just some issues of drama, you know, that I grew up with. But fortunately I had people in the family, <laughs> my grandparents, I love my grandparents. And um, I'm, I'm fortunate that I spent a lot of time with them because they like to talk and I like to listen. <laughs> and um, grandparents are a blessing. Grandparents are a blessing. Um, when my mom was always working, there, there had to be someone to step in. So I think um, that did a lot for me. It doesn't mean that I didn't go to therapy later on in life, but um, for like, there was, I think uh, the one time that I went was basically for what I would call secondary trauma. When something (laughs) tragic happens to someone else in your family and you don't really know how to address it, but you you really want to. Um, Mm -hmm. And it, that that was what I was going through. Um, so it, it was helpful to have someone to talk to in that case who was not really, uh, who was really a stranger and you could just say everything that's on your mind. Um, so. I, I definitely agree as far as I definitely agree on both points. Like, you know, everyone can't afford a therapist for one thing. Like it's, it's a specialist like anyone else. Um, and it's a form of healthcare. So if you don't have health insurance, sometimes it could be a little bit pricey. Um, if you don't have like a community-based counselor or some other benefits. And so like talking to someone, you know, else that's helpful, that may be a little bit unbiased, um, is something good. The point is, is really to just like find a safe space to really be able to have hard conversations or have someone be able to help parse out like what or find the root of what is really bothering you. Yeah. And and sometimes you can go therapy thinking or from what I've heard from other people, I haven't been able to st- stick to it this long. So I don't think I found the right therapist because then you can switch therapists, mm-hmm. I know. But like some people go into therapy with thinking they have one issue and it turns out you coming up with something else. You're like, oh, something else is going on. So yeah. um, 
Be, you yeah. know, it, to me, it seems like, you know, the, I like that you brought that up because I think sometimes we just out of, out of, out of a, um, a survival type mode, we tend to push things down so we can get through the day and then the next day and then the next day and then it becomes like normal. It becomes, it's an abnormal sort of normalcy. And um, like, like you just, like when you're in pain, you constantly sticking yourself. Now you're just constant, so you know, constantly in pain or something like that. Instead of addressing it. So, yeah, but then you could also be, um, and it, you can also be in an environment where you're around other people who really, that's just the way they handle things. They don't really address things that, that really should be addressed. <laughs> you know, I, in that type of environment, I feel like, woe is you because you're going to grow up being a bit, probably being a bit dysfunctional. Um, and then you get around other people and you're wondering why I feel, you know, why you, I, because I know I've, I've grown up with some dysfunction. I feel like, okay, these other people are different. Why do I feel, you know, why do I feel out of place here? Because yeah. of these issues. So. Yeah, I, um, I remember, I think. You know, I think, like you said, to a certain extent, all of us kind of push things down. But I think, but then when you've been told that you should talk things out and you try to do it, like, I know I don't do it all the time. Like, I've gotten told, like, I don't always express how I feel. Mm -hmm. And that builds to resentment. And it, but it's interesting because you may know it yourself and that might be a struggle. But then when you see someone else do it, it's mm -hmm. like, 10 times harder because like like in relationships for example any type of relationship like something happens and you know someone is bothered like they you you know like people are passively aggressive like they just they're not answering your calls they're avoiding you or whatever like th things aren't quite the same and then you try to bring up conversations and they just like deflect like like I don't know yeah so yeah. it's it's very it's very hard I think for the person to who wants to bring up and address certain things mm -hmm. to be able to address it without seeming like attacking the other person because the other person maybe they feel like maybe they're attacked or whatever so they don't they are not open to receiving like Mm -hmm. like receiving um addressing the situation yeah I've been thinking about how growing up I was told that um and I I think I would pretty much say what was on my mind not really thinking that it was abrupt but I was told at on several occasions that I'm abrupt and I was like abrupt. you are a little bit <laughs> what are you it, you could you could be a little it's not the abruptness it's nothing wrong with being honest I think it's just Would like it's abrupt or direct direct okay you well, can be you, can, you direct. can be very direct you don't like fluff it around you don't be like I'm sorry but you have to I think this this might not be that you'd be like no this can't happen <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like dang <laughs> but you be, but you know what the crazy thing about it is that over over the years I've tried not in trying not to be myself um I think I've overcompensated and I don't say what's on my mind and now <laughs> now now I get looked at like what's her problem you know um so you went the extreme. You went from direct to like to extremely passive. You yeah. Didn't do like, it. And then I feel very, uh, I think it affects the the conversation. Look, y'all sound, I got missing in there. Um, affects the- um, <laughs> My nails have not been done. <laughs> anywho, um, then I just think it affects the dynamics of, you know, how I interact with people. Now I feel like, 
I'm not being my my real self. Which I, my being my real self, I, it doesn't mean I have to hurt people's feelings. It's just I, that's not my intent. You know, maybe I just need to add like this is not my intent, but I'm just trying to tell you because I care. <laughs> it does, so, it does. Giselle's, you know, you know, my, you know, Giselle's that way. She could be like very direct and like, <laughs> like yeah. and I could be, and I could be direct a bit too. Like sometimes, like I notice, like I'm, I, I beat around the bush a lot, and I cannot be upfront because I know I'm a little bit more. Uh, I could be a little bit laid back, but over time, I've been more direct. So I'm trying to reel that back in and be like, find the middle ground and be like, you know, tell how you feel about a situation. But you, based upon whoever you're talking to, you gotta kind of have to like accommodate based upon, yeah. accommodate your approach. Yeah. Manage your approach to things. It, so. Yeah, it's true. But <laughs> sometimes I think having to do that, sometimes I think the process of learning you know, figuring out how to accommodate other people sends you into therapy because nobody likes me or I don't understand what I'm doing wrong or can you help me? What, how do I communicate with people? True. And, I, think that's, I think that's a real thing. People probably do go to therapy to learn how to communicate because like we only, the way we communicate is only like really a product of like how we grew up, how we saw other people communicate Mm -hmm. and our response to that whether we follow those footsteps or maybe we rebel and like no this is ridiculous I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> like I I definitely think um yeah I, I just think you know I think um I think overall though even though I think people are still in general not maybe maybe not even just black people in our community but I think of our there's still a stigma but I think there's more conversations that have been happening especially through social media so I think the younger generations are more open to it mm -hmm. like I don't I don't know I, I know I'm young but I feel like younger <laughs> like my generation younger maybe like the millennials and younger we're like more open to seeking therapy um taking mental health days not um just being able to like really explore ways to really like take care of ourselves so and including the black community so even though that's you know we, there might be some some disconnect with like older generations which with you it's never been like that because I didn't even realize people really felt that way about therapy like because you I remember you kind of talking about it when we were younger but like other people, I've definitely heard that. So um, I definitely heard about like, you know, people not really trusting therapy. Well, so. actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, even though I'm actually, I don't have a problem with therapy. I really don't because I like to be able to talk things out. I've actually gotten that response from older, uh, older people Mm -hmm. or you know other people and uh and, and to me I just think if you want to put effort into a relationship you do what you can to put effort into it yeah uh, about you know the stigma of what what's the stigma what is the stigma about well I think also I think as far as issues so go ahead yeah yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also, like, I think also people are just not, Black people aren't as trustworthy. Uh, they don't find professionals uh, that don't look like them as trustworthy, like uh, health professionals in general. So we need more Black therapists. So, uh, and then maybe that would be helpful. Yeah. Too. Yeah, we need, we do. But you know, to your point about lack of trust, uh, I think that's part of our, you know, a social history that we have in this country, the way Black people have been mistreated, you know, yeah. in medicine and, you know, when you go to physical therapy, I don't think any, I mean, I'm saying physical therapy, 
Sorry. This, the second time oh, you said therapy. that, that's why I was like, did you mean, did you mean, uh, no. <laughs> Not in this instance, but when you go to therapy, it's not like someone's going to inject you with something or hopefully not trying to hypnotize you. Sorry, I said hopefully. Don't know. I don't think it's that old practice, that old watching but, movies. I'm sorry. As soon as that movie, what was it, Get Out came out, I'm sure a lot of people thought, mm. <laughs> don't let somebody be stirring a, a cup of tea. I you still haven't seen that movie. I still haven't seen it yet. Oh boy, you have to see it. But yeah, um, if you just when people go to counseling, let's not use the word therapy then. Let's just say counseling. But it's more than just talking to somebody. You can go to what they call art therapy, or you can call, I'll call it dance therapy. You do something you enjoy doing where you can be yourself, some activity. I enjoy going dancing, which I can't do now with other people. I guess I'll have to dance with the YouTube videos. <laughs> but, but we all need an outlet. <clears throat> of course, the counseling, um, and you know, you gotta be able to talk to people to, to try to find your center. Okay. Yeah. Who you really are, being your authentic self, and or or when I say authentic, uh, being your authentic self, I don't know if I'm giving the wrong impression, but finding your purpose, finding your purpose. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. Finding your purpose. I don't know. Well, we're at least at least getting everything that is re- that's building up inside of you, not to let things build up. So yeah. I, I would say authentic self because people don't always go for like purpose or well yeah. but it's like, connected though don't you think I think it's kind of connected it it can it's be I think um if you go because you don't know your purpose and you're trying to figure things out move like your future that's one thing but people don't always go for like not because of purpose yeah, but I definitely think authentic self just like really fit figuring out who you really are, what you really, who you are really about, mm-hmm. and move forward with that. Um, but with that being said, we are coming up to the oh. end. We are. I was thinking we were coming up to the end too, but then a, and a memory popped in my mind that I really wanted to share because I know <laughs> we're going to be sharing it probably at the end of the video, but a longtime friend of mine from college um, who lives way on the other, you know, on the West Coast uh, was also my prayer friend for a number of years. And we talked about, first of all, I was having just, you know, when your dad and I got divorced and just going through a lot of changes since then. And she was just, just, just a wonderful prayer friend. I had two prayer friends, but she told me that she, I I didn't know that she had experienced a problem with alcohol. And she was talking about that. Um, We shared, you know, what we're going through. And I think we helped each other in that way. But, but anyhow, um, she was talking about the 12 step program, which I guess is more for Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, But Apparently, it these twelve steps, um, which I don't know by heart. I'll, I'll probably look into it. The twelve steps had to do with, to me, thinking through what your what your um, bad habit is or issue is or whatever, and it was it worked for her. And she said basically she was suggesting that it's something that anyone can really apply to whatever issue they're experiencing. So I just wanted to point that out. If you have any um, about that, uh, definitely send me the info so I can put in descriptions. If there's like any like, yes. like written information for so that people can look at that. Yeah, well, I, I know you can definitely go to Alcoholics Anonymous um and probably just type in alcoholics anonymous and then 12 steps 
So even if you are not someone who drinks, you can still be affected by being in an environment, you know, a dysfunctional environment because of, you know, someone who is alcoholic. If you've grown up with someone who's alcoholic or either either a drug addict or, you know, there are people who drink and do drugs who can do them and function somehow on a daily basis or try to function on a daily basis. However, when they get home, it might be a different story. So that is definitely true. Um, definitely thank you for sharing that because you know we can put that in like if you know if people do need some place I'll find something and stick it down below um but yeah this is the where we are wrapping up we are uh thank you for those who have tuned in if you like what we were talking about today about the group therapy I'm not the group therapy <laughs> therapy in the black community. Yeah, if you have if you like what we're talking about, please give us give us a thumbs up. It will encourage us to keep going with these conversations. Comment down below your thoughts. Um, and maybe we, this is something that can be continued to, to be a continued conversation maybe in different facets since there's only different things. Mm -hmm. When it comes to therapy, different avenues we can go with this. So please like, comment and subscribe. And um, we'll see you later. Follow us on our social medias too. <laughs> All right. I'll see you later, my.